Let's take a look at the national GCSE outcomes for 2018. And for each of the things that I'll talk about uh, over the course of the next couple of minutes, if you want to see more detail, there'll be a link in the top right hand corner that'll pop up that you can click through to watch a video on that aspect. So this year was obviously the second year for the new reformed nine to one GCSEs in English language and literature and in maths. And the first year for another 20 reformed nine to one GCSE qualifications. So we saw the new GCSEs in sciences, in languages, in history, geography, and many more subjects, meaning that actually around 90% of all GCSE entries are now in those reformed nine to one qualifications. And in terms of the outcomes, Actually, they were largely, as we'd expected to see, and largely stable at a national level, actually up a touch on average, but broadly very much in line with where the outcomes were last year. And that means the nine to one grading worked pretty much as we'd hoped. And the comparable outcomes approach that we use to help guide that grading has helped to keep results stable year on year so that students aren't disadvantaged by being the first cohort to sit the new qualifications. Now, what that's generally meant is that in the first year of the reform qualifications, we've often seen slightly lower grade boundaries compared to the legacy specifications last year. Now, in English language and maths, those core qualifications in their second year, uh, we've seen results for a 16 year old cohort. So comparing like with like to last year, um, actually be really stable, again, up a slight touch, um, but really consistent with last year, which suggests those qualifications are bedding in. In other subjects, in their first year of the reforms, uh, the outcomes are also pretty stable. In GCSE sciences, uh, the nature of the changes to those qualifications means that it's quite difficult to compare directly year on year, because actually the qualifications that are available have changed. But generally speaking, across the piece, the new qualifications uh, have seen pretty stable outcomes. Now, at a centre level, uh, we've seen variation actually be pretty similar to previous years as well. So within any given school and college, on average, the amount of swing that we've seen in those results has been pretty consistent with what we've seen in previous years. Now, that's really encouraging and suggests that in general, most schools and colleges have adapted quite well to the reforms. One of the most interesting aspects of the new 9 to 1 GCSEs is, of course, the new Grade 9. And we saw, as with last year, a lot of speculation and uh, debate in the press in the run-up to results day about uh, what those Grade 9s would look like, how many of them would, uh, would there be. Well, in the event, actually around 4.3% of all GCSE entries uh, achieved the new Grade 9. So we awarded something like 187,000 Grade 9s across the piece. So you can rest assured that, in fact, the Grade 9 is there, it does exist, and it will be awarded to make sure that your most highly attaining students are recognised. And actually, in total, 732 students even achieved a clean sweep of grade nines across all of their GCSEs. In terms of entries, uh, we've seen entries in the individual sciences, in languages, geography and history and computer science all go up, as you might expect to see across the EBAC subjects an increase in entries. We've also seen entries go up in subjects like art and design and citizenship. On the other hand, uh, we've seen design and technology and religious studies entries drop. So overall, for 2018, a really encouraging stable picture, 20 new GCSEs, pretty stable outcomes, and students protected and getting the grades that they deserve.